Welcome to another edition of Sprout Central. I'm Dennis Tynes. I'm your host. And as always, we have the Sprout Assistant, Joey, the co-host on the show. Good to be here. Joey, thank you for being here. It's my favorite day of the week, Dennis. You know, last week we had Scott Ennis on the show. That was an awesome show. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. He's awesome. And if you don't know who Scott Ennis is, well, that's Scooby-Doo and Shaggy and a lot of other Hanna-Barbera voices. But he also has the One Scott Shop Dot com so you can kind of personally connect with him and I thought that was a really cool thing he was a great guest he don't was. you think yeah he was awesome did you get to take some pictures with him after the I show I did yeah like we that? got to take a couple pictures it's always great meeting famous people you know oh yeah I, I know walking walking down from the coffee shop uh, we, we we were mobbed by the crowd even though yeah. we tried to keep it down last week tried to keep it under wraps okay. it just didn't work and you know I've been thinking about well first of all what are we gonna do on the show today we're working on the business plan right mm-hmm and mm -hmm. we've gotten a long way. We're mm -hmm. going to show kind of a, an outline of what you should have so far. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we're going to talk about who, who, who are you serving or selling to. We're going to talk about your market today. So if you're working on your business plan, it's time to get out your notebook because Joey and I are going to talk about what you should have so far and the next step, which is your market. Joey, you, you worked on the I slides, made some slides and all that today. stuff. Yep, it was we a, have some good stuff. We've got some good slides there today, yeah. Yep. And as far as guests are concerned, we've got, uh, we've got two guests today, right? That's, that's our, 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 our bid to try to outdo last week's show is two guests this time. Right. How are you going to top Scooby-Doo, right? So we've got a little kid who sells lemonade on the side of the road. His name is Vincent. And we've got the rock star of the art world. She does her own shows. She's on tour right now, and we're lucky to have Julia Reyes artist on the show today. We'll be right back after this. All right, so this is the most important Sprout Alert yet. The Paycheck Protection Program has been funded again. Did right. you hear about that, Joey? Yeah, I heard, I heard it's been funded again, and it ran out of money really quickly last time, didn't it? It did. So if there's any business right now that needs a paycheck protection loan, it's important that you act now, that you go ahead and call the number on the screen and get someone from Sprout to help you. So who exactly is it you think is going to be calling in for these? Who are we looking for to call in Sprout? Okay, to qualify, that's a great question. You have to have W-2 employees. You have to have had W-2 employees last year. and you have to, it has to be a small business with W-2 employees seeking $40,000 or more. Those are the guidelines for this round. All right, cool, cool. And it's forgivable too, isn't it? Isn't that a big thing about it? Well, and they've said, yes, the program could be forgivable, but be prepared to pay back. And we're going to put guidelines on Sprout.Fund about the forgivability. Okay, we're back, and we're working on the business plan, Joey. Working on the business plan. Right. You're already done with yours, which, I am. by the way, great job. I, I know I say that all the time, but it takes a lot of dedication to just sit down and write a business plan. It was definitely an experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it was a long, drawn-out experience, but it was worth it, though. It's definitely worth it. I actually didn't tell you I wanted it to be a surprise, but the lender told me that he was getting in touch with me today. He said, I'm going to call you after lunch, and I said, well, uh, wait until after I get done filming. But so there's news on the horizon. I'm not sure what it's going to be, but I'm hoping it's going to be good. Yeah, it's probably going to be good news. That was a really good business plan. Tell that lender, lender to wait until you're done with your TV show to call you. Yeah, that's what I did. So I, I got, you know, I'm filming the TV show. So yeah, you cool. can wait, just, you know. So what'd you do this weekend? Do anything interesting? Uh, it was a lot of, it was a pretty low key weekend uh, with all the rain and stuff, you know, that we've been having. Uh, had to work on this project that I've been working on for a little while with a, a graphic design on the side, you know, as you yeah. know. And we had some files I had to fix, so that's been, uh, I was jumping through hoops trying to fix these files. It was uh, just a whole thing, you know, but I, I, got them, I got them fixed, and that was about the most exciting part of my weekend. So that was. Well, we somebody's got. here. Hold on, what's going on? Um, a letter from corporate. What's this? Uh, they were. But I think they, I don't know if they think this is live or how it's working, but corporate just came in and gave me a letter. 
Did you see that guy? I saw that guy. That was yeah. That was his. Okay. Dig the scar. I gotta get. Okay, we got Vince on scars. the show, so let's we'll get through this because we got a lot to talk about. Hurry right. up with the letter. We're gonna let ben, Vince pick something out of the backpack. We've got the magic backpack here today. Things appear in there. It's crazy. Okay, let's see. Um, what else do we have here? Oh, after you give away all the stuff in the backpack that that Scott Ennis brought us, mm -hmm. Joey gets the backpack. Hey! You get the backpack, Joey? That's awesome. Dude, I this think backpack you, is yeah. so cool. They must have watched the show last week. They must know. have. I must have done a great job. Uh-oh, though, you're in trouble. Uh, well, it's never a little from corporate. You, uh, you have to get a jacket, but in order to, to have the jacket, you, we have to find a clothing sponsor. A clothing sponsor? Clothing sponsor. Somebody sponsored by, um, you know, a lot of shows have advertising. Sure, Not yeah. us. We don't do that. Right, right. But we're going to have to? We're going to have to because okay. you have to get a sponsor and a clothing sponsor and get a jacket from them, Joey. Wow. I don't know. I, there didn't. There was no, you know, or else Wait. on there, so that's a good thing. Normally they put an or else if is, there are consequences. Did they send you my tats? Is my, did we? No, they'll send that directly to you, the tattoos. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. You yeah. should be getting those in the mail. No, I am. I just thought that maybe I was going to get... I don't know. It's done. Okay. It's okay. It's fine. It's okay. Fine. Well, you know, you'll get them. Look, trust. Okay. You got to trust corporate. I trust, I trust corporate. Okay. Corporate's got our best interests at heart. So I trust All right. So you're doing graphic design on the side. First, wait. Let's just. What should they have so far? If the people that are following along the show, what should they have so far on their business plan, Joey? Uh, let's see. We have an outline slide. There it is. Outline so far. Uh, the concept, kickstart, the objectives, the mission. The keys to success, your company, company summary, company ownership, and startup table. Okay, now we're going to do a better job than that. Concept kickstart. Let's put that slide back up. That's what, what's my idea? What are we doing here? You got to have an idea before you start a business. So you come up with an idea, then you set your objectives, right? Right. Right. Then, okay, you've got your objectives, you're on a mission. What's your mission statement? Right. Okay, once you figure out your mission, what are your keys to success? What am I going to do? What are the things I need to do to be successful? Okay, so you're writing your business plan, so then you're gonna tell about your company, you're gonna tell how the company started, you're gonna talk about who owns the company, and then you're gonna write down how much money it costs to start your business. That's what you should have so far. If you don't have that, go to sprout.fund and send us a, an email or contact us and we'll help you. See, that's why we make such a great team. You read that slide so much better than I did. I made the slide, and then you read the slide. Right. It's, a, it's quite a dynamic duo we We've have going on We've been working here. together very well for a long time, Joey. I, yeah. You know, and, and, and we've never had a single conflict. Not have you single noticed one. that? I have. Any, never had a single conflict. You know, it's funny. I was actually telling uh, someone recently about how we, uh, we got started together. It was, at the, it was at the Crest Live building. And you were head of HR. And I was. <laughs> and, I was uh, the human resource director. Yeah, and I had a bit of uh, a less than savory interaction with our, um, I guess, the owner. And you were sent from HR to have a conversation with me about it. And, uh, and then you, after talking to me, you told me that you wanted me to work for you. And I was like, yeah, that sounds great. You know what? I straightened you right out. You straightened <laughs> right up, and I'm like, wow, this guy knows how to listen. So anyway, it's been a long and, and fruitful relationship. We're doing a lot of good things together, and I'm happy about it. Yeah, I noticed you, you did a tactical withdrawal on the socks. I just want to I show did. everybody. I want to thank Scott Ennis. Can we show that, the socks? Is that wrong to do that? Just tell there you go. There, that's, that's a there good, you go. That's a good yeah. Anyway, so I promised Scott Ennis, onescottshop.com, that we would... <laughs> I would wear the socks today, so I win. Yeah. It's, and it's, I knew you were going to, so I, I just went safe with my sock choice. But I did have a little right. bit of a, ah. a little bit. Yeah, I know. I got, a, I got a, I had a tactical uh, advantage. Smart move. But check it out. I do have this one cool trick. If you can see on the camera, it's, it looks like I'm wearing red socks, but I've actually got some blue in there. So oh, good a little job. bit, a little bit, a okay. little bit of flair, but nothing too crazy, you know. But next week, though, well, we'll let the, I'm definitely you know, going to we'll, win next week. I'm we'll let the fans be the judge week. next week. We're going to get some fan mail in, see who won the sock competition Maybe next this week. clothing sponsor can sponsor us some socks. Man, yeah, you tell them, find a clothing sponsor that has really cool socks when yeah. you're out and about looking for your clothing sponsor. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, wait, so I'm looking for the clothing sponsor? Yeah, you're going to go gonna knocking on doors, cold calling, looking for a clothing sponsor. All right. Sprout cool. assistant. Yeah. It's going to be fun. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, it's part of the job yeah. description, I guess. Right. We, we've got a fantastic guest on the show today, and I can't wait to talk to her. Julia Reyes, she does her own shows. She's on tour right now, 
but she was able to come by the studio and talk to us. So we're going to have a talk with, with a working artist who knows not only art, but the art business. So if you're an artist or you know an artist, call them up right now and tell them to watch this next segment of Sprout Central with Julia Reyes. You definitely don't want to miss it if you want to be in the art business or you just love art. Perfect Coming up best. after Vince, right? Right. Right after Vince. Right after Vince, you're right, Vince. Paran's Jambalaya Kitchen. Homemade Cajun dishes for takeout, curbside pickup, or home delivery. Call 228-207-2821. We serve offices, we cater, and we serve hungry families. From jambalaya and pastalaya to cracklins and boudin. Especially appealing, our wonderful and legendary pecan pie. That's Paran's. Call 228-207-2821. All right, welcome back, and just like I promised, we've got Vince here. Vince, welcome to Sprout Central. Give me a little fist bump there, brother. So I met you on the side of the road selling lemonade the other day. Hey, can we put up that picture of Vince selling lemonade? We got that? Anyway, what made you decide to sell lemonade on the side of the road? Well, I was trying to get a pet, and doing homeschool, Mom was like, you need to earn your stuff because that's how it goes, kind of. So I was just, you know, wondering ways to do it, and I didn't want to do anything crazy, so I started selling lemonade because that's something average, and in the city, you could make a good bit of money on lemonade because on a hot day, people are gonna want lemonade. You can make a good bit of money. About how much money do you make off the lemonade on the weekend? About $60 every time I sell. Wow, so you're homeschooling and you're learning entrepreneurship. That's super cool. I rode by and I saw you holding up that sign and I, I really wanted to stop and talk to you because I told you about this television show. It's a show about people like you who yeah. just want to make money doing what they do. So what else do you do for money uh, besides the lemonade? Chores. No, chores. But don't you, I heard you, you were selling pebbles the other day down there. Yes, pebbles. Where did you get the pebbles? Me and my brother have a tire swing under a big tree, and we thought, why not dig out some pebbles? Maybe we could find something. So we started digging out pebbles. I looked at him, and usually mom will say, like, you're not going to make any money or something, like she did last <laughs> time. She said, you're not going to catch a fish on a stick. And I caught the fish on a stick. I made, like, 20-something dollars off the pebbles because... I just needed some fishing money so I could get some dinner because I like fish. I love fish too and this is a beautiful place to live if you like to fish and catch your own fish. How old of a kid are you, Vince? Nine. You're nine years old, you earn your own fishing money and you found a way to make money digging up pebbles under the tire swing and selling lemonade and water along the side of the road. That's pretty impressive. Let me ask you a question, Vince. What are you going to do with all this money? Well, I'm trying to buy a Chinese water dragon, which is a certain type of lizard, and I'm going to try to save up for some fishing supplies. So you want a pet, you want a Chinese water dragon, and, and you want some fishing supplies. Let me ask, what, is, what does the Chinese water dragon eat? It eats wax worms, king wax worms, um, crickets, grasshoppers, and that's all I can remember. That's what you know that it eats so yeah. far. Okay, well, how much does that cost? With the tank and all the supplies, it go around about $200. Okay, and that's for the tank and enough food for how long? For maybe about a couple weeks. Okay, so how much is, the, is a bag of food? You could find it or you could buy it, but I think it's about $10. About $10? Ten dollars. So $10. you're going to need a budget. Do you know what a budget is? No. All I'm right, sure. well look, let's end it right there because we're out of time for today. Somebody put up Vince's information. So if you want to, if you want to help Vince, and if you want to stop by and get some pebbles or some lemonade, uh, 
How are we going to get in touch with Vincent? Okay, well, you call me and I will, I will uh, that's me. Call me and I'll call Vincent's mom. How's that sound if you need, if you want to help Vincent with this Chinese water dragon? Look, thank you for being on the show, Vincent. Um, look, we're going to have to go longer than, the, than, than we originally planned for you because I, I forgot about the letter from corporate, right? And it says on here, one of the things it told me to do was to let Vince pick something out of the magic backpack. And you know, Scooby-Doo was here. I told you about that, right? Yes. And you, so he's, the corporate said, you get to pick something out of the magic backpack. So whatever's in there right now, you can have. Anybody see, everybody see it? The magic backpack? Let's zoom in on that. There you go. It's, ooh, the magic backpack. Now you can, for you and your brothers that you manage, now oh, there's more stuff in there. Scooby snacks, but I want to thank don't forget onescottshop.com. Scott Ennis gave us these generous gifts. Well, look, thank you for being on the show, Vince. You've been a great guest, and I hope you come back and see us again and tell me all about your, your latest entrepreneurial adventure. How's that sound? Sounds good. All right, brother. Take it easy. You too. Little Market on Bolande Street, right off Government Street, downtown Ocean Springs, now offering curbside service deliveries and home deliveries. Call 228-300-4545 or go online at iHeartBagel.com. Sliced deli meats and cheeses from Boar's Head. Great freezer meals for easy family dinners. The greatest homemade bagels. 228-300-4545 or iHeartBagel.com. Little Market, Ocean Springs. And we're back. Just like I promised, we have Julia Reyes on the show. Julia, welcome to the show. Give me a little <laughs> Sprout Central dap. <laughs> Thanks for having me. So the last time I talked to you, you were headed to Peru. I don't even remember why now. <laughs> why did you go to Peru? What was that about? Um, well, I went to Peru because I had recently shut down um, my business as uh, an art gallery in downtown Biloxi because I wanted to focus more on the act of making. Um, and so the first thing I did was look up art residencies um, in Spanish-speaking countries, and I decided I wanted to do, do an art residency somewhere um, and be out of my comfort zone for a while. So I spent a month in Peru doing an art residency there and um, kind of exploring the, the sacred valley of the Incas. So that was a, it was a great what, experience. What, what, what's this picture of? That's Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu. Yeah, yeah. so on that, on that trip I got to see I got to see Machu Picchu. It was actually this time uh, last year. <laughs> right. So this very time. So not Machu Picchu, but the time frame. So, so you were in business and and basically an art gallery. I remember the Almost Circle Gallery. We went there all the time. Yeah. And and decided you know selling art that's great, but you're a creator. And so the Peru trip was kind of a residency for inspiration for you. Yes, it was kind of my you know when you are in a business and we did a lot of events and featured other artists and I had my studio in there but you know you're kind of wearing many hats and I had to step back and kind of ask myself you know what I really wanted and sometimes it's hard you know you get in a momentum of one thing and you basically have to create chaos before you find you know resolution and that's you kind of that's do. kind of what I did <laughs> so it was good though but you know at first it was a little bit um, uncertain of trying to figure out my next direction uh, but so Peru was kind of like I'm just gonna go to Peru and figure it out. Uh, so and you went there we're gonna talk about what type of inspiration you got in a second but you had a great idea to, to raise money uh, for, for your residency and, and uh, let's get some of these postcard pictures up which was actually drawing pictures uh, and original artwork, and then sending the, the the pictures to your to your followers, to your fans, uh, as a fundraising. Yeah, yeah thing. So. that was kind of a um, sort of to to build it. It was a multiple things. I you know pre-sold the postcards um, to kind of, and they were basically more than a postcard. It was little works of art that they were folded, and then you opened it up, and you get the postmark 
from from Peru. So that was that's always I've always loved mail and keeping mm -hmm. in touch with people through mail. And so it was a way to keep me, you know, it became sort of my visual diary in a way while I was on the trip and then also a way to share with other people, you know, little moments. Each each person kind of got a little tidbit moment and I tried to think about some people I didn't really know, but some people I, you know, were specific, um, and I would think about the postcard, who I was sending it to, and on the last day I was there, I put, I put them all, and I was very nervous that they wouldn't make it, but I think they all made it, so, um, yeah, and, and I took pictures of each one of them, and the, the, the idea, which I started, um, was to put them all in kind of a zine or a book with writings from the trip, so, um, to have all of them, um, documented and have little books that I could eventually, you know, share the experience from Peru. So a potential coffee table book. Yeah, or what? just a little yeah, a little happy, you know, happy book. Excellent. So um, you, you've really found a way to 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 manage the artist side of what you do, but also to to be a sharp business person who's able to what we call on the show working without a net. You're you're an artist. You know you're not you're not a server in a restaurant. You're not a bartender anywhere. You're a full time artist doing what you love. What what's the balance there for for an artist to be able to actually manage a business and make a living doing it? What's the secret? Well, I think the balance is a constant. You know, it's constantly evolving. You're trying to find find that balance, but. I would say, you know, surrounding yourself. If you don't have knowledge of something, it's important to surround yourself and absorb, align yourself with people who know more than you and learn. Um, you know, even in a business, having a business partner who is specializes in one thing, not only just do hands off, but also learn from them and learn from each other. And I learned that a lot when I had Almost Circle, um, just being able to work with other people who knew more on the business side and. And you know, you kind of check each other, and and it it just adds to your pool of knowledge. Um, and I think that's important. You know, a lot of times people chalk artists off as these flaky, you know, unreliable individuals. And I just I know so many creative in entrepreneurs that are great, you know, great at what they do, you know, in their craft, but they're also very, you know, driven in their business, their business mentality because you have to be. I mean. Sometimes it's hard truths to look at numbers and say what's working and what's not, but that's the way you, you know, keep yourself going and you have right. to step back for anything, you know. Balance doing what you love, the art, with with learning how to 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 earn a living doing it. And that's what the show is about for for the artist and the the people who want to be able to make a living or just make something and sell it. We had Vince on earlier, he's digging up rocks and selling them. And Julia <laughs> Started out, I started out being a Julia Reyes fan, going to your shows. I didn't even know you. I just heard about a Julia Reyes show, and I'm like, I love art, and I love art openings, and this is a Julia Reyes show, and I went to it. At what point did you just start making a series of things, a series of pieces, and then having a show? How, how um, does that work? I would say I, I always, I've always been a maker, but um, it was post probably post college when I really learned about, you know, putting on a professional exhibit and pursuing that because as an artist, you know, there's so many different facets you could go into. If you want to be an artist that shows in a gallery or, you know, you want to make something and sell it online, there there is not a black and white direction and one thing is not, you know, necessarily more important over the other, but for me, I really enjoyed making the work I wanted and putting it out there to share because if you just make art and you don't share it, then, you know, it's kind of hard right. to... Um, What's the point? Yeah, and so I would say after college, I just kind of hit the ground running in that, and that was my focus alongside of working. Uh, I worked for the Oro Keefe Museum as an, in education, um, doing like outreach projects and stuff like that w through them. So I've kind of had this spectrum of... Um, wide spectrum of uh, things I've done. Experiences, right. Yeah. You, you have. A lot of them are, are business related and art related. I, I know, you know, I know a few things about you just because I follow your Instagram, which if you want to keep up with Julia Ray as artist, put up her Instagram and let's, this is the best way to follow her. She's got a great eye. 
But I notice you, you know, you're you kind of like, you know, Walter Anderson, only you only go to Deer Island. <laughs> I'm your, other islands. Your, I know, but you, I see you all the time, you know, Deer Island's like my second home. <laughs> your second home and working out there. Sometimes you're making books for people or just. It's kind of your your artist office sometimes. That's really I, it is. I have a hard time being inside for too long. I start getting really restless. Just in general, I have to kind of go, you know. And I think that that keeps, um, you know, keeps the mind the mind going. Um, Speaking of go, <laughs> you're on tour right now. We're really lucky to even have you in the studio. Uh, yeah. You're you're doing and and we put it up earlier. Clarence had up some of the mural you were making. Let's show the finished pro, finished picture of that Sports Illustrated mural you made. That's pretty high class right there. Um, so. Yeah, and that is in conjunction with an artist in New Orleans who I've been working with, um, Diane Colleen Painting mm -hmm. Studios. And so we, her and I both, we've been kind of tag teaming these projects, these large projects through this hotel, The Graduate, who they focus on um, you know, custom work through creatives all around. And so we've been lucky enough to be able to you know, this summer has just been intense with her and I. We've been, we call it the Mad Maxine pandemic tour. <laughs> so the we're mural just, tour, yeah. Yeah, and we, you know, we work well together. And, um, and so it's been, you know, her specialties are different than mine. And that's another thing. Um, we, a person, you know, we both bring something to the table that's um, different and that we, we kind of learn from each other. But she's been doing it. She's been doing um, her business for a long time. So. How many of the murals have you done so far? We've done, um, we've probably done, they're all different sizes and different in, uh, involvements, but probably, let's see, Knoxville, um, Nashville, Chapel Hill, Connecticut recently, two places in Connecticut, so yeah. Right. Yeah, so, and then our next one is in Tucson. Okay. It, That's, I mean, you're, you're on tour, you do your shows, and what, so what's next? Are you going to continue with the tour? Do you have some more of those to do? Or? Yeah, I'm just, you know, I've realized something um, just after closing the gallery and all of this. I've realized that the thing that I like about doing the large projects is the, f you know, it's so different from the gallery in that you're trying to get someone to come to a space to experience art. But when you're doing a large public project, you're already involving the viewer, you know, you don't have to walk in. They, people are automatically involved with it by experiencing it just by walking by. So I like that aspect of it, and I think I would like to, you know, continue um, going in that direction as well as making my own work and sh having shows and and all of that. But right now I'm kind of in this mentality of I like the challenge of working with other, collaborating and doing larger projects. So I feel like that's in the traveling part. So that's a lot yeah. of fun. So that's one of the reasons I became a fan of yours is because not only do I find your art very intriguing and interesting, is you're you're a proponent of art in everyday life. Like to you, uh, even a coffee cup is an, is art, and and I, I like to buy coffee cups from artists. But speaking of art in everyday life, we have something that I think is very artistic, which is the magic Scooby bag. <laughs> I like and, it. And Scooby or corporate said to give Julius to pick oh, whatever. I'm excited. There's usually something appears in the Scooby bag magically. So <laughs> okay. reach down in there and see if there's anything and be careful. All right, there's no like live animals in there. There's no badger in there. in there. I mean, I'm ready. All, All right. right. <laughs> what you getting? Well, be careful. Oh, okay. Oh, Pez throwback, Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo. Oh, don't um. even open. That's a collector's <laughs> item. Don't eat that. That'll be good for when I get hangry and, you know. On tour. Yeah, that's something. Okay. It's Keep important. You. you gotta, you gotta remain fed. <laughs> okay, well, congratulations on the Scooby-Doo Pez dispenser. Thank you. And thank you for coming on the show. We are running out of time. Thank so you for Thank you, Julia. Me. Please come back. And don't miss next week's episode of Sprout Central. We're going to continue on the business plan and helping you take your dreams and build a community.